decent video. I, I fired up the stove. It was like a New Year's Eve. Uh, and this is a SIG fire jet. And it's an older stove from back in the midst of the backpacking grays. It has a very plastic pump. And it has a very light gauge limited life hose. The hose connects here and here with a threaded fitting. And this pump unfortunately has a limited life. Mine's in pretty good shape but not all of them are. And eventually when they die then you're kind of stuck. What do you do? How do you get this nice stove to work? It's a, it's a nice stove because it'll work with white gas or with kerosene. Uh, so it's a multi-fuel stove. Well, what I'm going to do and on behalf of a client, because my stuff's still working here, I'm crossing my fingers, it's going to keep working for a long time, but I have a client whose hose has died or their pump has died and they want to keep their stove running because it's a nice uh, multi-fuel stove with not a loud, roary sound to it. It's nice and quiet. Um, we're going to take this 7 16 size hex, brass hex, and turn it into an adapter that will affix to this end of the stove and enable you to use alternative pumps and hoses, which I'll show you um, how that works later. Actually, one particular set of hose but uh, multiple different kinds of pumps. There's two different kinds of pumps I can think that you could use. So um, that's what this video is going to be about. And I'm going to get started on that right now. So here we have the original hose that goes to our fire jet, SIG fire jet stove. This end seals here on the pump and it uses this O-ring to seal with. Threads in there, but that O-ring against the plastic is what seals. I'm not real thrilled with that, and but that's the way they did it. On the other end, see it's going to go in here like that. And inside is this O-ring, which sits on a flat surface in there. This collar just spins, and it's actually sealing to this portion. You can see this wiggles. It's actually sealing right here against this flat surface inside here. Inside there, and that's so that's why it's a flat washer. Now. I have an adapter I just finished making. You saw me make it. And at this end, we have M8 by 0.5 thread, which is the thread for a Primus OmniFuel hose. The Primus OmniFuel doesn't use gaskets. It's a straight brass to brass connection uh, seal, which is why that, that's the end I did first, because I wanted to make sure it was dead on and dead flat because that has to thread in there like that and then tighten up and actually seal kind of deforms the brass and forms the seals that's liquid and uh, fuel tight 
Um, and that's why probably I probably noticed it or mentioned it. That's why this is this little rim here. I cut this little rim so that it's very flimsy because it's going to actually deform that rim to make the seal. At this end, though, oh here, wait. Okay, now at this end here. I want to put some sort of washer in because it's got to form a seal against this part of the stove right here. This is M8 by 1. M8 by 1. And that's going to have to seal there against there. I also cut the center hole big enough so that this cable will actually come out through the adapter because you can see it hangs out here about six millimeters. So at this end, um, I don't, I'm not going to use a flat washer because this is not flat in here. I can't cut it. It's slightly angled, uh, but I can use these Viton O-rings and they can just go inside here like this. And only one is necessary, but I'm going to send my client an extra one. And we fit that down in there. And now that's going to roll down on there and seal at that end. So now is the time when I set it all up and uh, I do a, a leak test by actually seeing if I get any fuel leaking. And then I light it up to see if I get any other fuel leaking. It's kind of a little whoa, scary maybe sometimes. But there you go. Now one thing I do notice is this flap is going to come around here and strike this surface. So in use, now that you've exchanged this, you're going to want to keep this baby on here. Keep the Primus OmniFuel Ergo Pump Hose. It's an Ergo Pump Hose, but it's a OmniFuel. One or two, doesn't matter. And then you can kind of fold that. And you're, you're never going to have it quite the same smoothness because it's just going to be kind of in the way. Or the alternative is you can just, you know, unscrew this whole part here. See, that works just fine too. So the way to maybe do that is to put a little blue thread locker put a little blue thread locker on these threads and then it would be um, it would form more of one of a piece or you know you could even use red if you wanted and then that'll this will be the part that you're connecting and disconnecting you can see it even hits the the cable there actually I'm not sure what that's all about so that's just the way they did it it's kind of weird so we're going to set up and we're going to try it one thing I'd point out before I do that is with the ergo pump hose because it's got a Lindell style valve, you can use your standard <clears throat> Ergo pump. These are available on uh, eBay right now. I see there's a bunch of them for sale at various prices. You know, shop around, get the cheap one. You can also get them from Primus by special order. Or what's really cool is you can even use a uh, OptiFuel, a Polaris OptiFuel pump, which is nice. And a lot of people don't know this. This is a reinforced fiber plastic head on the Primus uh, Ergo Pump. But on the uh, Optimus Polaris Pump, this looks like plastic. It's not. This is um, black anodized aluminum, as is this. And uh, I also like that it's all of one piece, pretty much. The, the way they've done this, you don't have to worry anymore about, hopefully, about this blowing out of here. I just think it's a better setup than they used to have on the old Nova pumps. We're going to set up and do a leak test. Okay, so here we are ready to go ahead and, and leak test. We want to test here and here. Make sure this is going to leak. So, I mean, really, uh, probably the best way is just to go ahead and start it up. And, you know, I've got this nice valve I can use over here with my ergo pump to shut it down if it's a problem. And just for safety's sake, I do have a couple of fire extinguishers, one sitting on either side of me. So, you know, y'all who are worried about, oh, he's doing it inside, it's dangerous. Yeah, you know, chill, it's okay. I do this a lot and you know, a trained professional, don't try this at home, blah, 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 okay? There's no training involved. Self-taught professional, how about that? There you go. 
So we, we are preheating what I did. This is uh, denatured alcohol. I keep in this little container. I've squirted some into the little pan underneath the burner there. Lit it. It's heating. This is the boring time. Uh, a couple things I could talk about. The little o-ring I used is a Viton o-ring and it should stand up to the heat at least as well as what I think is just a plain you know rubber ring that they used originally. Um, let's see what else we got. There was something else I was going to say. Oh yeah okay so we're, what we're going to find out is this pump that came with the fire jet has this little plastic <laughs> valve on it. It's not very good for uh, doing uh, any kind of simmer. It's either on or off. And we're going to see if maybe the ergo pump does a little better with its higher quality valve. Now you're wondering, well, why has he got those big yellow flames? Probably that's because leftover from New Year's. That's just the fuel that's in the overhead vaporization tube that's here. That's it burning off. You notice the, the alcohol still going? Or actually, no, it isn't. So we're ready to go? I think we are? Yep, okay, let's try it out. There we go. That's pretty sweet. Now, I gotta tell you, I did, did kind of pump this up a lot just because I'm used to doing that. So it'll be like a trial by fire. <laughs> All right, let's see if we get any flames down here at our valve. Nope. Let's check the other side. Bring it around here. Dang, what's this thing? Oh, my bad. Okay, let's try here. Doesn't seem to be any leakies there. Let's try again. Yep, no leaks, no flames erupting. Try this side again. Ah, we're good. So there it is. And that's about all it does. Let's let's try the uh, ergo valve, the ergo pump valve. See if we can get a simmer. The noise you're hearing is my shop heater kicking on. Not real. This is the problem when you have an overhead vaporization tube like this. They just don't tend to simmer very well unless you have at least another valve down here. And then sometimes not. Well, it's something. There's a little more controllability there than with the uh, original pump. Not a lot, but some. I wonder if it would be better with the with the Polaris pump. Might be. Maybe I'll try that next. All right, stay tuned. We'll we'll try it with the Polaris pump here after this thing shuts down. So here's the Omni, uh, yeah, the Omni fuel hose with the Sig fire jet and the Polaris pump. And actually, what I think is happening here, I'm I'm not getting a good flow even though I got everything all the way open. And I think it's because the valve here is actually bottoming out on the uh, Polaris pump before it can get a, a real good flow going. So that might be a problem. You might have to like file off the bottom of that valve. It does work, but it's just, it doesn't have the power it should because I don't think it's actually open all the way and then you have two valves to play with 
<laughs> but the flow just seems not full and it's kind of restricted. So maybe not a good idea. Maybe <laughs> just st stick with the intended Omni Fuel Ergo Pump and you're fine. It was a lot better deal. And of course, what everybody really wanted to know is, well, hey, if you've got, an, <laughs> got a Primus uh, Omni Fuel Ergo Pump hose, will it will it burn uh, isobutane? And as you can see, yeah, sure, you bet, it does. Um, what I did is I did use the air restrictor uh, lever. I did put it over there as if I were burning kerosene to partially restrict the air intake. Now the other question is, will it do an inverted? Well, it should because we have the overhead vaporization tube. So when this comes, uh, when it feeds liquid fuel into there, that's where the vaporization is going to happen. Let's try that and see what happens. Look out. <laughs> So it has to clear the line of gaseous fuel first until it gets to the liquid. I, I would think by now we're into liquid. So yeah, it seems to rock really good. This is a little bag it comes in. I'm just putting it back here so you can see the flame a little better. It's a little orange, isn't it? I wonder if I go ahead and move that lever over. Yeah, okay, so now it's getting all the air. It's a little breathy. Put it back. There we go. So pretty cool. And uh, any leaks? Now we can check with actual gas. No, no leaks. That's working great. Close that valve. Now you're wondering, well, if you close the valve, how come it's still going? Well, the reason is is because this is pressurized liquid since it's upside down. It's got to burn all that pressurized liquid off. It takes a little while to settle down. <laughs>